When I was a kid, Free Willy was one of my favorite movies, but I always wondered, what happened after the credits rolled? What happened to Willy in the Wild? Hey guys, Julia here for D News. Recently, killer whales or orca whales held in captivity have made big splashes in the news. Most recently, because the animal activist group PETA is filing a complaint against Florida Aquarium over their treatment of an orca whale called Lolita. PETA is calling for her release, but that got us wondering, how do captive animals fare once released in the wild? Trace talked about pets you shouldn't release into the wild, but what about wild animals? Do they do better in their natural habitat after they've been in captivity? Well, some captive breeding and reintroduction programs are really important for conservation efforts. Programs like this have been really successful with the return of species like the black-footed ferret, bison, peregrine falcon, and more. Another more recent study by the International Union for Conservation of Nature found that most release programs work. They reviewed 67 releases of all sorts of animals, from orangutans to parrots, fish, and frogs. Of those releases, 13 were highly successful, 28 were successful, 25 were partially successful, and one was a failure. So really it depends on the species and it depends on the place. Like fish tended to fare better than mammals. But on the other hand, a 2008 study published in the journal Biological Conservation found that the odds are against reintroduced carnivores. The study reviewed 47 case studies of 17 different carnivore species. The researchers found that only one in three released least animals survived, and that over half of those deaths were a human's fault, either by hunting or a car accident. But despite the disappointing results, the authors were optimistic. Kristen Jewell, one of the study's authors, said that I believe reintroduction projects are vital to conservation efforts. It's just that the raising techniques need to be changed. The study recommends restricting contact with humans and improving captive habitats. Basically, try to raise young animals in an environment as close to the wild as possible so they can learn to live and hunt on their own. But what about animals who've been in captivity for display or entertainment? Well, it's rare for them to be released, but it has happened. Keiko, the orca who starred in the 90s film Free Willy, was successfully released, but unfortunately died of pneumonia in 2003. And currently, two Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins called Taysen and Boksun are learning to be wild again. They were illegally caught a few years ago, and after a prolonged legal battle, they've won the right to be free after five years in captivity. But it's not as easy as throwing them back into the ocean. They've got to go through wild rehab, where they'll limit contact with humans and learn to hunt again. It's an intense program, kind of like dolphin boot camp, where they have to build muscle and skills they lost in captivity. But they're not the first. Five others have been through dolphin boot camp before them, and some have joined wild pods. But they might be the last. It's incredibly expensive to release large marine mammals, and as long as marine parks exist, they'll want to keep their stars of the show. Speaking of PETA, have you ever wondered just how powerful are they? Check out this video right here from Test Tube News. Few have been as internationally famous as PETA. The group was originally founded in 1980 and attracted national attention when key members took photos exposing squalid animal testing facilities. So what do you think? Should whales and dolphins be returned to the wild? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back here. We've got new episodes every day of the week.